if you're thinking about starting your own business, then there's a couple of scenarios that can arise and which I come across very frequently. The first one is where you might be buying a small business through a broker. And so it may be a hairdresser's, it may be a nail bar, it may be a barber shop or something of that nature. And the existing occupant, the existing business owner is selling the business through a broker and is getting out. And the broker may be offering to transfer or ensure the smooth transfer of the business from the existing owner to you. And you may, understandably, you're going to be trying to cut costs and not get into legal fees or keep them to a minimum if you can. And that's fair enough. That's understandable. But you must be very aware and very clued in to the fact that if you're buying, for example, a hairdresser's or a nail bar, firstly, there's the existing business. And secondly, there's the premises. And the premises is going to be held on some sort of a lease. And every lease that has ever been drafted, in order for it to be assigned or transferred from one person to another, requires the landlord's consent. So the very fact that the landlord or the lease needs to be transferred, never mind the business, from the existing business owner to you, it's going to require a certain degree of legal formality. In other words, the landlord's consent must be obtained. You must also carry out basic inquiries about title of the landlord to grant the lease or to assign the lease. You must also be concerned that there's no existing issues in relation to commercial rates, for example, and you're not going to walk into a haymaker of a rates bill from the local authority. You need to be concerned about planning. There are a lot of issues you need to be concerned about. So if you're taking over a business like that, it's all very well for a broker or somebody to say, look, it's only a Mickey Mouse or a small business. It's only going to cost five grand, 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand or whatever. Bottom line is, you could be walking yourself into a pile of trouble if you don't go to the expense and take the time to get a solicitor to carry out the basic research and the basic inquiries, particularly in relation to the premises. Because if there's outstanding rent, or if the landlord doesn't consent, or if there's any other issue with the lease, you may well end up buying a small business but ending up in significant trouble with the landlord. And you may even uh, have trouble with the local authority in relation to planning or in relation to outstanding commercial rates. So, the first scenario that I'd warn you against is a situation where a broker or even a third party or an independent uh, person or a so-called independent person says to you, look, give me 10 or 15 grand and I can bring about the transfer of this business to you. This other person, the existing business owner, is leaving the country and it's a very straightforward process and you don't need to get a solicitor involved. You don't need to get any other uh, professionals involved either. You're going to save yourself some money. Be very, very wary of that. The second situation is where you are going to take a premises, maybe take a couple of, um, or take an office, or perhaps take a retail unit, or perhaps take uh, two or three rooms in a big uh, house that's currently being used as an office or has uh, different businesses occupying it. In that situation, you're going to be looking at a lease. The key thing with the lease is the length of the lease. Now, if it's a four-year, nine-month lease, the likelihood is that the Landlord and Tenant Act 1980 does not give you the entitlement when the lease is expired to a new lease. Now, this may suit you fine. You may not want to commit for the long term, but you need to be aware at the outset that if the lease is for four years and nine months, you're not entitled to a new lease and any money or any major investment or expenditure you may incur could be wasted and you may do that not knowing that at the end of the term you're not actually legally entitled to a new lease. Now the landlord can give you a new lease but you'd have to wonder at the outset that if he wanted to enter into a long-term lease why he would give you a four-year nine-month lease in the first instance. So be careful about that as I say it may suit you uh, that you have a short lease and that you haven't got a huge obligation or a lengthy obligation in terms of time etc etc and you may be looking for a premises which is only temporary and that you're going to get a new premises in four or five years time when you have built your business up but do be wary do be careful about taking on a short lease and then 
making major expenditure because you could be turfed out and your money could be wasted. If the lease is over four years and nine months, if it's five years, six years, ten years, then by law you're entitled to a new lease if you want to exercise that option. The other thing you need to be care careful about is a thing called a deed of renunciation. You may be granted a lease, but you may also be required by the landlord or landlord solicitor to sign a deed of renunciation. A deed of renunciation is you basically signing to give up your right to a new lease on the expiry of the term of the existing lease. So that will supersede, as it were, the Landlord and Tenant Act or any right that you have. In other words, you've entered into a deed to give up your right to a new lease at the end of the term. Again, you need to be very, very aware and mindful of what you're actually signing and the legal consequences of it. I hope you find this useful. Uh, if you do, give the thumbs up down below and you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. Good luck with your business too.